Hi, this is Atesh and welcome to the NS3 video guide. So we are trying to learn about the NS3 and I'm trying to show you how to install and all of such stuff. So I guess you have already downloaded the VMware player version, although I have the workstation also. But I prefer to show you everything on the VM player so everything just looks like similar to you. Now what I have done here also, I have gone ahead and download the desktop version. The server version will also work exactly the same. And here is the reason why I have downloaded the desktop because they have got the LTS support that is long term support in the desktop also. So hardly it's going to make any difference choose the desktop or choose the server. It's going to be really the same out here. Now I have got my ISO file on my desktop and virtual player is up and running. So let's try to install that. Now what you have to do, you have to just click on this create new virtual machine and it will open a very simple wizard onto your screen. And as I click on it, here it is. Now in this wizard, you have to choose the second option that is the disk installer image. And what you have to do, you have to just simply click on the browse, go to your desktop and simply move on to this ISO file. Now this ISO file might look something with a different icon, maybe the RAR icon or anything. You don't have to extract it, just leave it as it is. And just click on that and click on open. And just leave the rest of the installation like this installer and all these not selected because you don't want to install your operating system based on that. You just want to install it from an ISO. And it says Ubuntu 14.04 detected. But you don't need to worry about if it doesn't detect. We will resolve that problem later on. Uh, just click on the next. Now here is the full name, password and all of that. Now make sure that you remember all of that. And I'm just going to name this NS3. The username is going to be NS3 also. The password is NS3 also. And password is NS3 also. Now make sure that you remember all of that because without that you will not get the access to your machine. So I'll just click on the next and again, the name only depends on you. You can name your machine anything. Now let's click on the next. Now it says Ubuntu 2, but I'm going to say it as NS3 because it's going to be the NS3 machine. The location, here is your location. And it says C drive slash user Igneous uh, document virtual machine NS3. Now what you have to do here is, uh, this machine is actually being installed into your C drive. So you should have some space being uh, left out there in your C drive. Now in the next step, it is going to say that it is going to consume around 20 GB from your C drive. But here is the point that you should be, uh, you should have your, in your knowledge. Although it says that 20 GB, but that's the max limit from your C drive. So it's not going to consume 2 GB. It's going to consume only around two or two and a half GB from your C drive. So, uh, and it's also not going to expand till 20 GB, but if you are uh, short of space, uh, you can make sure that it takes uh, around 15 GB or maybe 12 GB. That's kind of a, a more than enough for Ubuntu. And you can store it as a single disk or multiple disk. I would recommend you to store it into the multiple files, but again, matter of choice, uh, will not affect much of the things. Just click on the next and the next wizard you can customize your hardware. Here is the list of hardware that we need to be customized. Although my system is having a pretty good RAM, it's around 8 GB, but if you are short of RAM, you can make it uh, just drag and drop here till the 512 MB, but I will give it around 1.5 GB to make sure that things are working fast. Also make sure that the network adapter that is NAT is connected to the first one that is NAT. You can also go for the host or custom, but what I want to do here is I want your device to be connected on the internet. And with the NAT, it is going to share the internet from your main machine. So your main machine that is Windows is being connected to the internet with your Wi-Fi or maybe your ether port. And it's going to take internet from that machine automatically. And rest all are just a kind of a thing which you would like to take a look, but not a compulsion. I'll just close out the things and click on the finish. Now, as I just click on the finish, it is going to take a couple of moments only before it starts out your machine. And there are a couple of pop-ups are going to be happen. Just don't worry about it. Just close them. These are some recommendations and all of the things happening around. Now, one more important thing, again, a pop-up, just close it down. What you have to do, 
uh, what you have to do once you click on this black screen area, your cursor will uh, not be working. So what you have to do, you have to press Control plus Alt to get out of this screen. That's a kind of advice if you get stuck around here. So make sure that you remember this shortcut. Press Control and Alt uh, to get out of this virtual environment. Again, a step of recommendation or kind of a tips and tricks things, your virtual machine is entirely a different computer. Again, I'm repeating that again. Your virtual machine is again a, a different machine with different IP and everything. So if you want to copy paste some things into the virtual machine, uh, it will not work just like that in your C drive. You are copying, try to copying the things from C drive to D drive. It would be just like you are trying to press uh, control C onto a one computer, then you move on to a different computer and trying to press control V. It's not going to happen. So make sure that you remember that. If you want to transfer anything to the virtual machine, you have to use pen drive. Or again, I would be recommending to use uh, the workstation where you have got these kinds of facility where you can drag and drop things from your desktop to your virtual machine. And rest of the things are pretty simple. It's going to take a couple of moments to install all of the things. You don't need to worry about anything. It's going to do all of the things from now. In the previous versions of the Linux, you have to be worried about the installation because it asks you a couple of things like installation and all of that. Uh, right now, you just have to don't have to worry about anything like that. And what you have to do once the installation is finished, restart your virtual machine and then just type out this command which you see out there onto your screen. It's just sudo apt get update. You want to update all of your repositories and all of the files. So make sure that you type the command in the terminal that is being shown onto your screen. So that's all about the installation of Ubuntu onto a virtual machine. It's pretty simple process. Go ahead and give it a try.